Oof, I know I'm late to the party with this video, but Generation of 4 Pokemon getting remade? Sign me up, please! Pokemon Diamond and Pearl was my first fully immersed Pokemon experience back in the days of Nintendo DS. And now that it's being remade for the Nintendo Switch, I am super mega hyped that I'm gonna relive this game again. Ah, I'm just so excited. Woo! My name is Junior Leva, aka Mr. Awesome, and here's 10 reasons to get hyped for Pokemon Brilliant, Diamond, and Shining Pearl. Make sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content such as ranking videos, streams, and 10 reasons videos just like this one. Shout out to my YouTube premiere squad. Roll the intro. Number one, finally, Gen 4 remakes. Yo, I literally screamed in the shower when this was first shown off. I love Generation 4, it's my favorite generation out of all Pokemon. In fact, Pokemon Pearl is the game that got me into Pokemon in the first place. Generation 4 is home to my favorite Pokemon evolution, which is the Chimchar evolution, which includes Chimchar, Monferno, and Infernape. I'm glad we finally got these remakes because I was scared of the potential of Let's Go Johto. Just because, you know, it could have possibly been a thing. But with great patience comes great reward. Number 2, The Art Direction. Alright, so it's been an iffy topic to talk about, especially when the game was first shown off a couple weeks ago. But let me throw my two cents onto why you should be at least a little hyped for the art direction. This is a faithful recreation of the original Diamond and Pearl games. Yes, it has a chibi look in the overworld, but this is literally a 3D version of what we were used to with the original versions of this game. Take a look at the sprite model versus the 3D model. It kind of looks like just a reimagining of it. The areas and everything of the original were preserved to be as great as before. Plus, the in-game battles look really, really good in my opinion. And they're actually using normal sized models. So, you know, there's a plus within that too. Now, if it was chibi battles, I think I would have been like, ho, 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 stop right there. Now, I'll be honest, I wish the games looked a little bit more like Sword and Shield, but I'm happy knowing that this remake won't have to face the graphical challenges of Sword and Shield. The new developers played it safe, yes. But hey, I'm more than content. I'm happy I'm going to play this game as faithfully as possible. Number 3, the starter Pokemon. Oh man, I love the starter Pokemon for Generation 4. Their designs make sense with the type of Pokemon they are. Turtwig is a turtle who has his epic evolution line. Piplup is all cute and penguin-like, but when it reaches Empoleon, woohoo, it's badass. Then it's my boy Chimchar, a monkey Pokemon who has a fire on his butt that evolves into the awesome Infernape. For some reason, Infernape gives me Goku vibes. These three starters, to me, made Pokemon Pearl a treat to revisit. I never got the same vibe from the other starter Pokemon in other generations, and honestly, out of all the starter Pokemon there are, these are the ones I care for the most. Number four, new developers. This is the first mainline Pokemon game not to be developed by Game Freak. These remakes are developed by Ilka Inc. These developers have a track history of, you know, notable franchises like Dragon Quest, Metal Gear, and the Yakuza games. And it's not their first time working on anything Pokemon related. They made this whole Pokemon home thing before, so they have the Pokemon experience. Which means Game Freak is now free to develop Pokemon Legends Arceus full time. Which honestly means we're getting two quality games back to back. And honestly, I'm really hyped for that. Hopefully these new developers do us justice, man. Number five, it comes out this year. I can't sit here and lie, I was worried about 2021. With Super Mario 3D World already being out in February, the Switch barely had games that piqued my interest. Yeah, there's the potential of the 35th anniversary of Zelda, but nothing's confirmed. But then this came along. At least now I'll know that by November, I will have something to play that can hold me off until next year. And not only me, but you guys too. The game looks just about complete if you ask me. I'm pretty sure this game is done. But hopefully by the end of the year, there's more improvements and more things to look forward to. More quality and stuff, you know? But yeah, I'm super excited. I'm hyped that it comes out this year. I'm hyped for, po for Mario Golf as well, but you know, I've been waiting for these Gen 4 remakes for a while now. Hey, thanks for making it to the halfway point of this video. Let's hit 250 likes and let's show the world how hyped we are for, for the Pokemon remakes. Number 6, the Sinnoh region's lore. The Sinnoh region, honestly, is my favorite region. Nostalgia aside, I think that this region, me for some reason, really feels alive. 
the legendaries and the lore based off this region alone makes this my favorite region. Not only that, I, I think my testament of this region holds true just because there's a game like Pokemon Legends Arceus that takes place here in Sinnoh. I just feel like with Sinnoh, it's the beginning of Pokemon and I have this thing with starting areas. I don't know, I just like starting areas of, of video games. Like if you ask me, Skyward Sword is honestly my favorite Zelda game. Why? Because it's just the beginning of Zelda. I don't know, something about beginnings I really enjoy. Overall, I like Sinnoh, but I love Gen 4. I didn't even know people didn't like Gen 4 until a few years back. So I hope this game improves on the criticisms people have had on Gen 4 and people appreciate Gen 4 the way I have these past few years. Number 7. It's a faithful remake. What hyped me up a lot about this remake is that you can tell the developers put love and care into it. The game as I mentioned before looks like an HD uprise of the 2D graphics. Everything I remember seems familiar like towns and cities. The story is being reproduced and I remember thoroughly enjoying the story back when I was 10 years old. The Pokemon shown off in this game remain the same for the most part and the lore remains the same, which is cool to me. Honestly, the more faithful it is, the more I'm looking forward to it. But don't take this as me not looking forward to the developers putting new stuff. I really hope there's new stuff. Number 8. Another home console Pokemon game. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl would be the third set of home console Pokemon games out of the mainline Pokemon series. The Switch has really made the dream of playing a mainline Pokemon games on TV a reality. Coincidentally enough, the Generation 4 of games back in the DS is the first set of games you couldn't officially play on the TV. Every game before Gen 4 you can technically play on the TV with things like the Game Boy Player. But now that this game is being remade onto the Nintendo Switch, we can now enjoy Pokemon Diamond and Pearl on our 101 inch TVs. Amazing. Number 9. The possibility of Platinum content. The inclusion of Pokemon Platinum content wouldn't surprise me for the remakes, since Platinum's considered the definitive Gen 4 experience, which I have to agree because <laughs> have you played Platinum? It's really, really good. I would love it if you can go to the Sorted Dimension again in these remakes, just because it was a really cool area to go through back when Pokemon Platinum originally came out. Yo, just the thought of the possibility of Platinum content being in the game just hypes me up further. Number 10. Sinnoh's Legendary Pokemon Well, this was the first Pokemon game I've ever beaten, I have to say, the legendaries felt different. While yes, I've made it known that this is my first Pokemon game I played through and through, I've always had familiarity with the legendaries from previous generations, but something about Gen 4's legendaries felt a bit different. I love the concept of space and time in all types of medium, so seeing Pokemon based off this idea was just fascinating. My favorite legendary in the entirety of Pokemon is Palkia. While I like the content of time more than anything else, something about Palkia sat right with me. I don't know, I think it's just its design for some reason. It, it just really, really, really resonates with me. And then there's Arceus, the god of Pokemon. Bro, that's insane. I remember catching Arceus with an action replay and feeling like I was on top of the world. These three legendaries really intrigued me at 10 years old. And once I started finding out about the lake legendaries and the aforementioned Garatina and Darkrai, ooh my god, this game felt really mystical. I'm happy I'm gonna revisit this stuff. The lake legendaries probably weren't the big thing for people, but for me it was like, whoa, I get to catch them? I don't know, it was really, it's just really exciting. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I hope you guys are hyped for the Pokemon Gen 4 remakes as much as I am. I seriously can't wait to stream Shining Pearl with you guys. So make sure to subscribe for future streams and Pokemon videos. As per always, shout out some of my current YouTube members. You guys put that pizza on my pepperoni. Without your monthly financial support, the channel wouldn't have grown as much as it did financially these past few months. If you want to support the channel monthly, make sure to hit that join button and become a member for as low as a dollar a month. Also, make sure to buy your very own Mr. Awesome merch and be part of these good looking individuals on screen. You guys look amazing as always. Drop a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. As always, stay golden.